Snail Pictures presents. Okay, let's keep reading. Cosetino, the missing ace. We are up to the chase. Hollow sprinted through the marketplace, pushing merchants and customers aside. If the spade got away, the king would be furious. Or maybe not. It was hard to predict the mood of the king, who was often in two minds about something. Possibly because he had two heads. Either way, Hollow wanted to know how the spade had escaped from the king's army. It was supposed to be impossible to do. Every soldier had been hypnotised by the king himself. Hollow turned a corner and kept running past crowded stalls, his soldiers following closely behind. He hated coming to Copper Town. It was much dirtier and smellier than Silver City. He supposed it was because they couldn't use magic to clean things. Many of these shops had sold magic items before. The Great Disenchantment. When the king outlawed magic. Now they had to sell items strictly for non-magic uses only. <clears throat> that rug is made of the finest wool, sir. Just watch out. It bites. Cauldrons get... X magic cauldrons here, only ten copper pieces each. Great for casseroles. Lamp shop prices you'd wish for. Did you see that angry wand run past? Seems fishy. That reminds me I'm hungry. Ooh, silver rings and top hats, perfect for the costume party, don't you think, Harry? Hollow couldn't see any spell dust in the air, but he didn't have time to slow down and make sure no one was breaking the law. He was too busy following the professor who had ducked into an alleyway up ahead. That way! Get him! The five soldiers ran into the alley, bellowing battle cries. Their boots left patterns in the dust. Hollow entered the alley and looked around. He saw some overturned bins, a parked wagon and a crow pecking at the dirt. The spade had vanished. I can smell spell dust. Something magical had just happened, but Hollow wasn't sure what. The spade he was looking for didn't have the power of invisibility, teleportion, teleportation or shape-shifting. Ace's power was transformation. He could turn creatures and objects into other things for short periods for a short period of time, and yet he was gone. Hollow kicked at the dust, grinding his teeth. This wasn't over. What do we do, boss? One of the soldiers asked. The ma that magician knew something, Hollow said. I'm going to find out what. Shark Tank. Ladies and gentlemen, Coz said to the Copperpot Theatre audience. This will be my last illusion tonight, possibly ever, since it's very dangerous. I could be badly injured or even killed. He paused to let the word, words sink in. The theatre was close to full. By banning magic, the king had made illusions more popular than ever. People came from all over Copper Town to watch Coz's shows. A young woman in a grey cloak sat two rows back from the front. Her face shadowed by a hood. Coz could only see her wide blue eyes. He winked at her. So, he said, if you don't want to see me die, now is your chance to leave. No one left the room. You're all happy to watch me die, Coz said. OK then, good to know. Nervous laughter echoed through the theatre. Coz hadn't wanted to perform the snake escape tonight, not after he and Ace had nearly died in the snake pit this morning, but Ace had given him the chance to perform a different stunt. Coz had asked him to change a big wooden crate into a glass-walled box. Ace had also transformed three of the snakes into sharks. <clears throat> Ace, soldier in the army of 52, Silver Castle, Silver City, Abilities Transformation. 
The spade seemed very kind, which, had ex which explained how he had escaped from the king's army. The king's hypnosis only worked on people who were cruel or selfish or cowardly. Ace had a clear conscience, so he had been able to run away. Coz walked over to the big glass box, which was covered by a red sheet. He pulled the sheet off. The audience gasped. Lockie walked onto the stage holding a steel chain and a rope. He wrapped the chain around Coz several times, holding his legs together and pinning his arms to his sides. He padlocked the links to one another and tied the rope to a hook behind Coz's neck. He threw the other end over a pulley above the tank. I will be hanging by a burning rope over the shark tank, Coz announced. If I pick these three locks and escape from the chain before the rope snaps, I will be able to swing to safety. If I don't, I will drop into the tank. I hope the sharks are friendly. There was no laughter this time. The crowd stared in horror, but also fascination. Coz had seen this many times. People didn't want to watch, but couldn't, couldn't bring themselves to look away. Lockie struck a match and touched it to the rope, which had been dunked in kerosene. The flames raced up the rope. Coz felt the back of his head get hot. Lift me up, he commanded. He was already wiggling. The chain wasn't quite as tight as it looked. Coz just had to get one, one arm free, and then he could use the paper clip hidden in his hand to pick the first lock. The burning rope went tight. Coz was lifted into the air. Soon he was above the shark tank. The sharks were swimming back and forth right under his feet. As snakes, they hadn't had a chance to kill him. Now they wanted revenge, and they were keen to try out all their new teeth. Coz managed to push his hand through a gap between the chains. He unfolded the paper clip and jammed one end into a padlock. The burning rope crackled above his head. Coz could already smell the smoke. The padlock, padlock opened. It hit the stage with a thunk. Ooh, there he is. Now that the chain was looser, Coz could get his whole arm free. He wriggled around until he found the second padlock and started picking it. The fire was getting hotter. The rope was coming apart. Stray fibers rained down around him, fizzing and hissing as they hit the water below. Ka-chunk! The second padlock was unlocked. Only one to go. No! The paper clip slipped out of Coz's hand. There was a small splash as it hit the water. Someone in the audience screamed, which set off someone else. Woo! Ah! Eek! Coz struggled, trying to free himself from the chains, but with the last padlock still closed, he couldn't get his legs free. The burning rope snapped. Coz fell for the heart stop fell for a heart stopping second before he hit the water. But he didn't sink. Shock shocked murmurs filled the crowd as Coz stood on top of the water. It was like he was wearing floating shoes, except the audience could clearly see his bare feet. It was impossible. The sharks chased each other's tails centimetres below his toes. The audience exploded into applause. Cheers and shrieks filled the, the theatre. Magic secret unlocked. Coz was actually standing on a pane of glass concealed a couple of centimetres beneath the surface of the water. There was a spare paper clip in his mouth, which he used to pick the last lock and unwind the chain. Coz took a bow. There was an invisible hole in the glass floor just in front of him. He dropped the chain through the hole so the audience could watch it sink. The sharks nibbled at the chain. The clapping got even louder. Cosetino, a voice shouted. Coz shielded his eyes from the stage lights. Hollow was striding down the aisle, flanked by two soldiers. The audience fell silent. When the king's army came to Coppertown, it always meant trouble. The woman in the hooded cloak looked especially worried. Coz wondered what she had to hide. So nice to see you again, Mr. Mr. Hello, Coz said. It's hollow, the magic wand snapped. He pointed at Coz, who still appeared to be floating on top of the water. Arrest that man! 
Then everything happened at once. The crowd scrambled out of their seats as the soldiers barreled down the aisle towards Coz. He did a backflip off the shark tank and landed on the stage. Lockie sprinted towards the tank with an axe. They always kept an axe handy in case a water escape went wrong. Run, Coz, he cried. Then he slammed the axe into the tank. The glass shattered. Screams filled the air as water poured off the stage and onto the seats. The soldiers who had been climbing up to the stage were knocked down by flying by the flying sharks, which immediately changed back into snakes. Mm. Shocked and confused, the soldiers wrestled with the deadly snakes as the audience rushed towards the exits. It was pandemonium. Run, 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 run. Up, up. Coz fled. There he is, climbing up the ladder, out the top of the building and across the roof. Soon, Coz was standing at the edge of the rooftop of his theatre. He couldn't see any soldiers. They must all be inside, looking for him. If he could get down to street level, he could lure the soldiers away before they found Ace hiding in the attic and the illegal spell book. If Hollow saw that, Coz was doomed. He would spend the rest of his life in the arcade. It was too far to jump. The fall would kill him instantly. Magic secret unlocked. Coz had once been a human fly, a performer who climbed tall buildings without any equipment. Coz had drilled invisible finger holes in the walls of his theatre so he could perform this trick. He crouched down, looking for the first row of finger holes. If he couldn't find them, he would be able to climb if he could find them, he would be able to climb down to safety. Freeze in the name of the king! Hollow yelled as he emerged out of the rooftop trapdoor, puffing. Coz spotted the finger holes. He reached down. Then Hollow hit him with a blast of magic and the whole world went black. Silver City. Coz woke up inside a horse-drawn carriage. His head was spinning. Hollow had hit him with a lot of magic, the sort, w sort which could stop a person's heart or fry their brains. Coz was lucky to be alive. The carriage doors were bolted from the outside, so Coz couldn't pick the locks. The windows were barred. He thought about trying to kick through the floor and escape onto the road, but he would probably be crushed by the wheels. Magic crackled outside, and the wheels of the carriage began to lift off the ground. The carriage rose higher and higher, glistening spell dust swirling around it. Coz peered out the window and could see Silver City up ahead, an enormous box floating in the clouds. The whole city was inside the box, connected to the ground only by a thin ladder of hovering steps. The walls of the box were mirrored, so the city seemed to go on forever. Once Coz was inside, there would be no escape. Two guards stood outside the gates, making sure no Coppertown residents could sneak in. They saluted Hollow as he drove the carriage into Silver City. Inside the gates, the streets were paved with silver. Magic lights shone from behind the windows of huge houses. Coz couldn't help but marvel at the floating objects and dazzling lights. Seeing magic, real magic, made him feel like a little boy again. The world seemed full of wonder. Anything was possible. The royal palace was a silver tower surrounded by mists. Gargoyles jutted out from the edges of the roof. One of them turned to watch as the carriage approached. Coz felt like it was looking right at him. Well, you're stuffed, said a voice from inside the Co Coz's fedora. Snuggles, I forgot you were in there. The rabbit popped her head out. Flakes of lettuce were stuck to her fluffy chin. Coz had no idea how she had smuggled food in there without him knowing. Obviously, Smuggles said, I know you're headed towards certain death, but did you really have to take me with you? Coz scratched her behind the ears. Sorry, Snuggles, don't worry. I'm a magician. I'll get us out of here. Or out of this. Snuggles looked doubtful. Uh-oh. Well, if the king decides to burn you alive or drown you or bury you, make sure you're not wearing the hat. She disappeared back into the darkness of Coz's hat. Thanks for your support, Snuggles, Coz grumbled. But she was right. He didn't have a plan. He was running out of time to create one. The carriage rolled up the driveway, which was pebbled with tiny nuggets of silver, towards the palace. When it crossed the drawbridge and stopped, Hollow opened the carriage door. Out! 
But of course, Coz beamed as though it had been a polite request and climbed out. Hollow pushed Coz through a set of big double doors, past several armed guards and up five flights of stairs. Eventually, Hollow opened another door and Coz found himself in a huge chamber. Candles burned in chandeliers high overhead. The floor was checkered like a chessboard. The lords and ladies of Magicland were dressed in puffy silk clothes and sparkling jewellery. Because magic was legal here, they could conjure up whatever clothes or possessions they wanted, so long as they didn't try to outshine the king. They all had perfect teeth thanks to magical dentistry and glowing skin thanks to magical moisturiser. When they saw Coz with his bare feet and plain trousers, the lords and ladies backed away as though he'd had an infectious disease. A waiter walked past carrying a platter of fruits and pastries. Coz took an apple and tucked it into his sleeve so quickly that no one saw him do it. A huge rabbit, easily twice as big as Coz, was standing right beside the king. The king himself was seated on an enormous silver throne. The stories were true. The king had two heads, one beneath the other. Neither of them looked pleased to see Coz. The King of Diamonds, King of Magicland, Silver Castle, Silver City, Abilities, Hypnotism. Hello, who is this? One of the king's heads bellowed. This man was found in performing magic in Coppertown, Your Majesty, Hollow said. Your Majesty, I use no such magic, Cos said. I am Cosepino, the Grand Illusionist. I perform tricks like so. He opened his hands, showing them to be empty. He waggled his fingers, then he reached out and plucked an apple from the air. Magic secret unlocked. After hiding the apple up his sleeve, Coz only needed to let it fall into his palm. This was a simple trick, but the crowd looked horrified. Coz top tossed the apple to a nearby man who dropped it like a hot coal. Magic is illegal for common copper towners, the king roared. Indeed it is, your majesty, Coz said quickly. I would never use real magic. This is mere illusion. Note the lack of spell dust in the air. And your servant, Mr. Jello, it's hollow, the magic wand growled. Cos ignored him. He can sense magic, yes. I'm sure he'll tell you I didn't use any. The king looked expectantly at hollow. No magic, hollow grumbled. Pretend magic still makes mockery of our laws, the king said. Off with his head. The crowd gasped. The king waved his hand like a puppeteer and the enormous rabbit reached behind the throne and picked up a broadsword with one muscular arm. With one, then it bared its huge teeth and marched towards Coz, the sword raised. Flex! King's bodyguard, Silver Castle, Silver City, abilities super strong. Coz backed away, his heart racing. It looked like the king had hypnotised the giant rabbit. He could control anyone with even a drop of evil in their heart. Coz wouldn't be able to talk the rabbit out of killing him. The king made a chopping motion with one hand. The rabbit swung the sword. Ooh, there it is. How is Cosipino going to escape from that? <laughs>